Aloha, everyone, and welcome back to Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm your host, Mitch Ewan, and today I'm delighted to be able to discuss Heiki Heroes Superpowers Art Adventure Program with our guests, Rebecca Choi, the project lead, and Danielle Preston, the artist in residence. So welcome, Danielle and Rebecca. So let me start with you, Rebecca. So tell me, or tell our audience rather, about Heiki Heroes program. Yeah, thanks for having us, Mitch. Um, so the Keiki Heroes program is a community empowerment project on Big Island here that really is looking to empower our children to stay safe and healthy during the pandemic and be resilient beyond it. So yeah, so I have a few questions uh, to start off with. Uh, first of all, just uh, at the top end, can you talk a little bit about your, uh, you know, the, the the uh, investment that you and your volunteers make for starting off. I'd, I'd like to know a little bit about your budget. So what kind of a budget do you operate on and uh, where do you get it? And how can people help? Mm, that's a great question. So we're an all volunteer team. Uh, we came together last year at the start of the pandemic looking for ways to support our community. And a right. lot of us were educators, business leaders, and STEM folks in our community here. And so we started to design PPE solutions and uh, Keiki Heroes is our solution to addressing Keiki resilience. How do our children experience the pandemic and how do they stay safe and healthy? But also beyond the pandemic, how will they be resilient leaders of tomorrow? So we um, operate as a volunteer team, um, but we do spend money on our printed materials, as you can see, activity books and stickers and decals have been donating to schools and community um, organizations that serve Keiki. And we were partnering with County of Hawaii and Vibrant Hawaii initially with CARES Act money. So we received over $170,000. And with that budget, we were able to print and distribute um, over 16,000 of the initial books and uh, we've been doing community distributions through food baskets, um, through vaccine clinics, through folks um, in the community, um, through the Hawaii Public Library System, and lots of partners that work with children. Um, so yes, we do need funding. Um, Mitch, thanks for asking. And um, you can go on our website to donate, even as an individual. Um, we are under a 501c3 nonprofit, so your donations are tax deductible. And for businesses or large organizations, we'd love to have you as a business partner. And you can sign up and we'd love to talk about maybe ways that we can uh, work together to ensure that our children are empowered through this time. Okay, so I'm also interested in what kind of a time commitment it's like for yourself personally or, or your volunteers. You know, how much, how much time a, a week do you put into this uh, project? You know, that's kind of a hard question because at some certain points during our project, when the fire department said, we need those 16,000 copies in one week, um, a lot of us were working full time for KK Heroes, um, you know, just trying to get to some of those deadlines. But uh, I think generally it's probably ranging about 20 hours a week or so for my time um, of just planning and um, connecting with community folks. And right now we're really looking to um, help our children and our Ohana around how the vaccinations will work for children as they roll that out. So things like that, um, but it really does vary. Um, but uh, I'm really excited that I get to spend this time investing in our children. So uh, before the show started, I, I, I was interested in how, what are the mechanics of how you actually deliver the program? Like, what are the nuts and bolts? I mean, do you meet these children, uh, the Keiki, the children online, or do you hold classes in person? H how does that actually work? Mm -hmm. So Keiki Heroes overall, we're not serving our children directly, but we are a resource uh, provider. So we give tools and in our shop on our website, parents and educators can download materials to work together with their children. We think it's really important for the family 
to really learn together on this journey. And if you can pull up the slides, we have our superpower art adventure. And for that, um, it is a virtual online video tutorial. So um, if you go to the next slide, you'll start to see some of our artists um, that we have partnered with, local artists here in Hawaii, and they have provided video tutorials that children anywhere around Hawaii can access on their tablets, on their phones, and on their computers. And we're hoping that parents and Keiki learn together to explore this art and name their superpowers. So a big part of our project is empowering the children and making sure that they remember they have strength, they have something to give, they have something to contribute to our community. And by exploring art, which is a healing mode of expression, that they get the opportunity to say, oh, I think this is my superpower and this is what I can contribute to my Ohana and community. That's really great. So uh, let's uh, so let's go to uh, slide six, so Danielle. Um, the artists in residence. So yes. we talked a little bit about before coming on the show and, and like a top level thing before you launch out is, you know, I was asking you about how, how art develops thinking skills, imagination, you know, expressing opinions. Would you care to comment on that? Yeah. So I think art is a facilitation for children to become more aware of their own feelings and their environment and also the people around them. And it allows them to play with the way that they think and feel in a way that's tangible and accessible to them. I also believe that art is a wonderful tool to create wonder and to encourage that and to encourage curiosity. And, and what's been your uh, experience with the, this program? Is this, is this hitting a bell? Is this, is this ringing a bell with the kids and with the parents? Yes. Yeah, so when I was asked by Rebecca Choi to join the program as an artist, I was overjoyed because of the ideals and what the goals are and how we want to facilitate this organization to allow the keiki to feel more connected and to feel that they have a place within their communities and to recognize their strengths, especially having gone through a whole year of the pandemic. And so we all might be in a state of maybe questioning who we are or what our purpose is in our communities. Well, as the artist in residence, uh, could you describe your program now? Can we get into the actual nuts and bolts of the art? Uh, the various, you know, uh, ways you you uh, introduce them to art, with the art, the art forms, I guess is the word I'm, I'm looking for. Yeah, so um, I specifically love to share art through collage, and the activity that I provided for the Keiki was a series of collage videos, and in those videos, I walk through the kids with the kids on how to flip through some magazines that are accessible at their homes and other tools that we use are most likely within their home so anyone can do it and I start off with really discussing and, and bringing into awareness what might be our superpowers and to really allow the keiki to reflect and think about what it is that they feel excited about and what makes them feel like themselves so specifically i go through three different cards we have a community card a shadow card and a dream card in the community card the keiki are asked to look for images in the magazines that illustrate their superpower as a part of their community so how is their community what is that to them what is that in a person? So their family, animals, the environment or food, how are the things around them taking care of them? And how does their own superpower relate to what's going on around them in, in their environment and in their families? We have a shadow card too, which is 
a way for the keiki to think about what they're afraid of. So in our shadows, we, we may be afraid of being alone. We may be afraid of heights, things like that. And by thinking about our fears, by looking for those images that resonate with us and what we're afraid of, we're kind of looking at the edges and all the different angles of what we're afraid of. And that allows us to kind of play with it because then the keiki go through and they cut out those images and then they get to paste them onto a card and make their own sort of story with all of those images. Lastly, we have a dream card and that's the card where the keiki get to find images that have to do with their big dreams, whether it's going on an adventure somewhere or maybe it's making more friends or helping people. And then lastly, once the keiki are finished with these collage cards and they have all these images and ideas about what these concepts mean to them, community, shadow, and dream, I ask them to go and share their card with a family member or someone around so that they can talk about it out loud and be personable with the people around them. So do you, do you ask them to write a story uh, based on their shadow card as well? I mean, capture their interaction with their parents or their friends or whatever that they show this uh, card to? No, it's more of a visual practice. It's, it's in the pictures and it's, it's kind of, um, it feels really accessible with the images. And then they can use their voices and say, well, this is what community means to me. And this is how my superpower is going to allow me to overcome my fear of being alone. Or this is what I dream about. So yeah. what, what have been the results? And, and have there been any, uh, talk, us, talk to me or tell our audience, are, are there any things that actually surprised you? In the art making process? Yeah, the the results. So you know the the kind of collages they produced and the ideas they came out with. Were there any kind of really novel and imaginative things that even you might not have thought about? So. Oh yeah, I'm consistently surprised in the way that Kiki think about the things going on around them. I am consistently inspired by what they notice and what's important to them. I really enjoy talking about mind-body connection. And so it's really engaging and personable and fun to, to hear about how they're feeling about the, their environment or how they feel fear in their bodies, wherever that may be happening. And so it's always surprising and it's always really fun. They so how do you draw that wonderful thing to say. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. How do you draw the information out of them? Do you like, uh, they show you their, their card, their shadow card with their collage. And then what do you do? Do you ask them questions about it? Or how do they, how do you interact with them and draw these ideas out of them? So questions are the way to go. Yeah, I love to ask questions. I love to see them uh, look up and then you know, ponder what I've just presented to them. Um, asking Keiki about how they feel and to try to explain it, whether it be in an abstract way or literal, like I feel this in my body or I think this or I believe this. It's. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a wonderful opportunity for parents and educators and folks, the safe adults in our Keiki's lives that connect and interact with them over these activities. So the idea isn't just to turn on the video and walk away. The idea is for adults to share in this experience, do art together with the Kiki. And in that sharing, you, you can also point out and say, I noticed you did this. I see you picked this picture and start to inquire about what does that mean for you? Because for me, this is how I look at it. But in that questioning and connection, we really think that's part of the strengthening and resilience process that our Keiki will develop. And, and we notice that someone's curious and interested in what they are creating and what they have to say. So yeah. What's been the reaction of the parents? 
So when we have been sharing this project out with folks, um, educators and parents alike, I think there's uh, been some real sense of excitement that they get to try art with their kids in a very fun and easy way. No pressure. You know, you don't have to like show anybody or do anything in front of folks. You can do it in the comfort of your own home in the time that makes sense for you. And then there, I think also for a lot of parents, um, there's some sense of relief, right? We are um, having to entertain and educate our children, a lot of them on our own, um, as they're, a lot of them are still in distance learning mode, are not able to go back full time into in-person instruction. And as summer opens up, so this project has been designed to provide really quality art instruction content, as well as that engagement opportunity within Ohana and maybe a summer school environment or even with a social pod. Um, if there's a few families that can watch kids together over the summer um, to sort of provide that um, child care um, through friends, then this could be a really great resource for them to share. So how long does it last? I mean, the program lasts. I mean, you give them an assignment and they do their assignment and then it's a one shot deal or does it, is there a continuation to this? Yeah, so we just launched this project um, on Monday, and we'll be rolling through the end of July. So this is all summer long, so KT will be able to have access, and we're continuing to add art content. So Danielle is a collage artist, and she does other art forms as well, but there's many different kinds of art. So we have another artist, Noe, um, who is developing storytelling with physical movement and poses. So she created a story that's really easy for Katie to understand, and they do poses through it. Also, we have artists who are teaching kids how to look at eyes. Like we may be wearing a mask, but even still, we can communicate with what our eyes say. So let's observe what the eyes are saying, and we can smile with our eyes and be able to notice what people are saying. Um, so lots of different kinds of art, including songwriting. So we have a local musician, Jerry Gertz who is doing a piece on how to write your own lyric to a song that you might already know, like You Are My Sunshine or Happy Birthday. We can take that tune and make it into something that is fun for them to express their feelings, their, maybe something that's going on for them, and now we can put it to music. Well, that's really innovative. So uh, especially I like the eye one because that's all we see when we see people now is just their eyes. And like you said, I mean, people can, you know, smile with their eye or, you know, like not frown or, you know, take the frown lines out. So, um, Danielle, all right, what about, um, have you looked at or are you guys considering putting together a book with all these uh, various um, art uh, form uh, artworks that the kids produce? Um, how, is there any idea about going and presenting that or, you know, passing it out as a, as like a PDF book or something like that? Rebecca can answer that, but I am really excited about knowing that the kids do have a place to submit their art and that prizes will be available to them for sharing their art and being acknowledged. But what about a collection, Rebecca? Yeah, that's a really good question. We haven't thought about printing anything, but we are um, asking Katie to submit their art virtually. So either as a photo or if it's a song or a dance or movement as a video. And then we will be holding a community gallery space so that on our website, people can see all of the wonderful art that is being produced by our children. Um, and that's the way that they can contribute too, because I think that would create a lot of joy in our community. Um, and then the last thing, like um, Danielle said, we are giving um, the Kiki opportunity to win some goodies. So our business partners, and if you're a business partner who'd like to partner up with us and give out some goodies to Katie, it's not a contest. We're not judging them on their art, but every child who submits art will get a chance to win something in a random drawing. Let's go to slide seven and let's talk about um, how uh, to get involved for artists. And maybe Danielle, do you want to uh, attack that and then? Rebecca, you can jump in as well. Yeah, so we have an email. It says kakeyheroes at gmail.com. And then we have a website. Yeah, so on the website, you can find everything. It's really easy to go through. And 
it's got all photos and imagery there to go through. Right. Yeah, we'd love more artists like Danielle who can share their um, special superpowers of creativity and artistry with us um, to create content uh, in the media that you are comfortable with for uh, sharing our content with children. How many artists do you have on, uh, uh, on the team right now? You mentioned two, obviously Danielle's on it. Yeah, so I think we have five who have active videos that are either published or in edit right now, and we're continuing to add them. Okay, that's great. So uh, let's go to slide eight, where we talk about how can the business community get involved? So that's probably your shot there, Rebecca. Yes, exactly. So if you are a member of our community as, you know, a business leader or a community leader, we would love your support, um, either financially donating um, to support our stipend to our artists. We are paying our artists a small fee so for their time and effort because they spend a lot of energy creating these videos. It's probably not enough money to cover it all, but we would like to give them a little token of appreciation. So we're asking business partners to help us do that. And we are uh, providing these incentives, uh, drawings um, for our keiki to win prizes. So if you can donate even a gift card or something that you can um, in kind donate to us so that we can celebrate it with our children, um, the art that they're sending in to us, that would be really awesome. And what, what has been the response from the business community? So because we just launched it, we, are, we got a lot of interested folks but we're still working on like nailing those down in terms of what exact donations we will receive. But last time we did this um, with our Halloween giveaway, we had amazing support from local businesses like KTA Superstores, who's a business partner of ours. Um, Suisan is a business partner of ours. You know, lots of local um, HPM and folks like that. So we're, we're really uh, kind of expecting them to step up again <laughs> and, and partner with us. So how do you get the word out to them? Um, you, have a, we, you have a mailing yeah. list or a, you know a, a, an email blast. That's right. We we have them on email. We have folks who are part of our business partner community already that are signed up to partner with us. So we sent sent them all the information, um, and we're continuing to share out um, via just personal contact, um, asking our friends to share with their friends. So if you see what you like here, please share out and also reach out to us at kikiheroes at gmail.com. And we'd love to find ways to connect with you. So I'm on slide 10. And um, do you want to talk about this slide? It's about vaccines. Yeah, so we wanted to kind of end on a really positive news that we just heard that um, vaccines will be available. The Pfizer vaccine will be available for 12 to 15 year olds shortly. So here on the Big Island, we heard that actually the mass vac um, that it'll be happening on May 15th will actually be available to 12 to 15 year olds. Um, and that's run by Hilo Medical Center and they're pre-registering those taking now. So if you are interested, um, please go hit, um, hit up the Hilo uh, Medical Center website. But we're really excited about this because we want to go back to school in person. We want our businesses to open up fully. We want to be able to welcome people into our communities. We want to be able to play sports. And we want to do all the things that we love doing. And this is what's going to help us get there as a community. So we are a part of an effort to really um, help uh, get the messages out and opportunities for people to get vaccinated. So well, yeah, you have a list of questions here. Were, were those presented to the kids for them to come up with answers? So those are questions that we received from children and, and really? yes, about the vaccine and about the COVID vaccine. Wow particular because it's a little bit different than the ones that kids are used to getting. So right. we have worked with the Department of Health to answer those questions uh, for, for our Ohana and KG. Okay, so uh, let's go to the last slide because we have contact information here. That's right. Um, that's our KG Heroes website. It's kgheroes.org, real simple. And we're also on Facebook and Instagram. So please follow us. Um, and if you would like to learn more or connect with us about this project, the Superpower Art Adventure, um, please email us at kkheroes at gmail.com. That's great. So um, 
Danielle, are there any closing comments you'd like to make about the program? We're, we're almost out of time, but I want to give you a, a chance to talk a little bit more about the art part. So I think that this is just a really wonderful opportunity for Keiki to express their creativity, to feel safe in their curiosities, and to understand that art is accessible and that it's fun and it's a way to express ourselves and to connect. And I hope that the parents can get involved and really learn from the program as well as learn from what their own children have to say and what they're feeling. Yeah, like Art Linkletter says, you know, kids come out with the most amazing things because yeah. they are basically free thinkers. Mm -hmm. We haven't forced them, you know, back into the box. They just naturally think out of the box. Yeah. So that's really great. So Rebecca, do you want to uh, uh, give a few uh, final comments? Yeah, thank you for having us. We're super excited about how our community is coming together in this time. Um, Keiki Heroes is all grassroots. And so thank you for being um, a supporting community. We would love your continued um, financial support if possible, but also just sharing out so people can have access. I mean, that's a big part of our project is making sure art is accessible and that the information, good information is accessible to everybody. Awesome. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. You've been watching Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. And today we've been discussing Keiki Heroes, Superpowers Art Adventure Program with Rebecca Choi and Danielle Preston. Thanks for participating, Re Rebecca and Danielle. Mahalo. And Mahalo. Thanks, to our viewers, thanks to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Mitch Yuan. We'll be back next week with another edition of Hawaii State of Clean Energy. Aloha.